Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. I am posting this message, labeling it as November 23rd, because I'm posting it in time for the 23rd where I am in the world. However, uh, it might not be the 23rd where you are, or it could be that you don't see this for a few weeks, months, years. So I'm setting the intention that this be a message for the next 24 hours from whenever you happen to see it. Happy birthday to all of the November 23rd babies. And happy birthday to you if it's your birthday on whatever random day you stumble upon this video. Alrighty, my darlings. Ooh. <laughs> okay. We have the Dust card. The card of Scorpio. Well, we're in Sagittarius season, so it would have been really cool to get the Temperance card to kick off Sagittarius season. But we have the Dust card here. So, um, that being said, if you have Scorpio placements, there could be big changes and big shifts happening for you in those houses or in those areas of your life. Um, or you may be dealing with a Scorpio that might be a significant soulmate or a significant person in your life. Um, if you are a Scorpio, this could be a time in which you're really, uh, taking back your power. Maybe you've felt, uh, uh, powerless or maybe you just haven't felt like yourself this could be a time in which you're coming into taking back your power and being in your authenticity and living your best authentic life unapologetically um, and just really learning to embrace and love everything about you and seeing how it's all a part of the journey and just uh, uh, just embracing all of it and uh, we do have the new moon in Sagittarius energy right now. And so the death card is the phoenix rising from the ashes. It's the ending of old cycles and or I shouldn't say cycles, but it's the ending of something old, like an old chapter. A chapter is coming to completion and it's the beginning of something new. Okay, so if something is ending in your life, when we see the death card, you it's not going to take you by surprise. It's not like the tower. Tower sometimes smacks us in the face and comes out of nowhere, right? We feel blindsided. But the kind of ending that comes with the death card, you know. Like you're ready. You're ready for it. You're ready to move on. You're ready to change. Um, but I do feel like there's something in your life that you're putting an end to for like once and for all. So it could be a certain aspect of your life. Uh, for some of you, this could be a career change or some of you may be deciding to retire uh, depending on what stage of life you're in. Um, this could be uh, ending certain like ways of doing things or certain friendships that have been draining for you or just certain habits that you feel like this has really been uh, slowing me down or, or blocking me. And I'm seeing like crutches in my mind. So it could be something that you were using as a crutch or something that was uh, like a survival mechanism. And now you're like, I don't need this anymore. Right? I want to replace this with something else. I want to replace this with something better. So there could be putting an end to certain habits. Um, that's the feeling I'm getting here with the death card. With the new moon energy that we're coming into, we're also coming into... Uh, the end of the calendar year and people are thinking about the new year and, and you might be saying, oh, well, th these are the things I'm going to change in the coming year. So I feel there's a certain ending to certain habits. Um, I had to pause for a moment and just really kind of look at the card for a while and just kind of feel my way through it and sense my way through it, like the vibes it's giving me, uh, the things that are jumping out at me. And I got a really um, interesting message here. Now, first and foremost, I do want to say that this can be also ego death. And ego death is when we're uh, breaking out of the conditioning, okay? We all go through conditioning uh, growing up, right? We're all kind of told... Uh, you know, be less this way, be more this way, uh, don't be like this, don't be like that, 
oh, well, you know, you should do this instead, or this is going to be a better path for you. And so, you know, we grow up wanting to be good little boys and girls, and we grow up wanting to, uh, you know, make the grownups happy, and we try to adjust, and we try to be like our friends. And so we, we go against our nature a lot, and we try to be what we're told is like good. Uh, or what's going to make us successful. Ego death occurs when you begin to break out of all of that. And you begin to break out of the concern of what other people are going to think. Or like the need for approval. And you go back to who you were when you were born. <laughs> right? Uh, we're born with personality. Anybody who's been around babies can tell you that babies are born with personality. And, uh, and, and so it's like you're, you're going back to that. You're shaking off the conditioning and the programming with the ego death. And when we go through ego death, ego death can be very scary because all of a sudden our old go-tos don't work anymore. The things that we liked or the things that we gravitated towards, we lose interest. And so we might think, oh my goodness, nothing makes me happy anymore. It's not that nothing makes you happy anymore. Uh, you were conditioned to believe those things were going to make you happy. And now that you're breaking out of that, you have to just get to know yourself all over again. You might not like the movies you used to like, the TV shows you used to like, the music you used to like. You might be going through all your playlists going, oh, I don't like any of this. Uh, you might not enjoy certain company like you used to. And this is a part of the ego death, the transformation. So don't let it freak you out or scare you if you feel like nothing's making me happy. Um, it is new moon energy right now, so it's a great time to set the intention of how you want to feel. Like, this is how I want to feel. This is how I uh, want, like, to see myself in the future, in the near future. This is how I want to feel right now. <laughs> if I could make a wave of magic wand, this is what I want right now. You know, so putting that out there. But going back here to the message I was getting as I was looking at the card. Those of you who follow my channel, you know that I'm an intuitive reader. I know what the meanings are of the cards and I apply them, but I also intuitively get like a certain vibe or a certain message sometime where I'm like, oh, I feel I feel this energy from this card. So as I was looking at the card, I was getting a feeling or a sense of like letting go of a belief, like a long held belief. And it could be like a belief you had in a person or a belief you had about a situation and how you thought it was going to go or how you thought it was going to work out. Like maybe you've just been holding out and saying, oh, just a little while longer and this will change or this person will change their mind or this person will get it together or you know, they'll give me the promotion or they'll give me the raise or a, a belief in terms of like a spiritual belief or a religious belief um, or, or even you know political ideologies or something somebody had told you you know, uh, but just something you believe. There's many different ways that we can believe. And this is a general reading, so it can apply in different ways. I feel like you have lost, I don't know if I want to say you've lost your faith in this belief, but I feel like a lot of you are just in this energy where uh, you see it to not be true. I don't know if I want to use such a strong word as a lie, but you see it to be like, this is not what it uh, appears to be. This is not what it presents itself to be. And you're leaving it. Like you're just walking away. And I feel there's a sense of a person or people trying to bring you back to it. Trying to pull you back to it. And you're just in this very calm, very just uh accepted surrendered uh surrendered to this kind of state where like you're not deterred you're like it, it just it is what it is this is what it is i know what i know i see what i see i've made up my mind there's nothing to do here there's nothing to say here there's nothing to see here and i feel a sense of like it's time to go like it's time to go 
And there might be people saying, wait a minute, hold on. What about this? What about that? Like they might be trying to convince you, you know, this, this, that, that. And you just might be in, in the feeling or in the sense of, um, uh, it's, it, it's falling off. It's falling very short. It's falling very flat. It doesn't have any effect on you. So even if somebody's trying to make you feel sorry for them or make you feel guilty or make you feel bad or reason with you or logic with you, I just feel like you just have this sense of like not even reacting. Like I'm not even going to react to this. Like almost like you're floating away from the situation. Very anticlimactic, uh, at least from your end. Uh, just a sense of like you may appear to others as like being void of emotion, like you're just unmovable, you're, uh, you're, you're being very cold about it. But it's just because you're so done. You're so done. And it could be a situation that you white knuckled for so long, that now that it's come to this, it's just, it, there's nothing to do but to, to, to move on. And so I feel you're just very calmly uh, making a big uh, exit uh, from a relationship or from a, a job or organization and there's a lot of attempts to get you to stay and you're just like zoned out you're just looking at you're just walking like it almost seems like you that you can't even hear them but you hear them but it just it has no effect it almost like it's giving me the feeling or the vibes. Some of you know um, that I was raised in the church or like a Christian uh, sect that believes in excommunication. And some of you know that I got excommunicated and it wasn't for tarot, oddly enough. Tarot came much later. Uh, but at the time I got excommunicated and like one of the main head uh, decision makers was a, a childhood friend, someone I grew up with. Uh, and, uh, you know, when they told me they're going to excommunicate me and I just, I just sat there for a moment and I thought about it and I was going through so much pain and so much suffering and it was just such a terrible time in my life. And when they, I won't go into details, but like the things that were said, and the way that it was decided, I just kind of sat there and I just felt like, like God wouldn't do that. You know, like God wouldn't do that. Like God wouldn't turn somebody away like that. Like if you're going to God and you're saying, God, please help me. God isn't going to say, no, I'm not going to help you get out of here. You're not worthy of my help. God's not going to do that. So for me in that moment, it just kind of hit me. And I was like, this can't be where God is because God wouldn't do that. Jesus wouldn't do that, right? If, if, if my belief is a Christian belief and I think of all of the people Jesus sat with and all of the people Jesus preached to and all of the people Jesus healed and he sat with some people who did some pretty bad things and I hadn't done anything like that. And even if I had, he would have still sat with me. He would have still spoken to me. He would have said, how can I help you? And so it was just in that moment where I was like, okay, well then God's not here. And they were like, well, aren't you going to co contest it? Aren't you going to appeal it? You have 10 days to write a letter to the, uh, you know, the higher ups and let them know that you don't agree. And I just sat there and I was just like, I didn't know what to say. And then they were like, okay, well then we'll read you some scriptures so that uh, the Holy Spirit could enter your heart and like God can, uh, you know, uh, help, help you to come back. And I, w I was like, no, like, it, it, like I'm, I'm not even going to go into the details. But in my mind, I was just like, like, what's the point? Like, they've already told me they're kicking me out. Um, I have 10 days to fight it. But do I even want to fight it? Because, like, God wouldn't be like that. Jesus wouldn't be like that. 
So it could just be that kind of situation where you just feel like whatever they're telling you doesn't make sense. It's like the actions have spoken louder than the words. And so the words are just kind of like nothing. <laughs> you know, the words are just kind of like, they're pointless. And so you just might be at this point where you're like, there's nothing to talk about. Maybe you want to show me how I'm wrong. Maybe you want to come at me with like your your case of, you know, why I should listen to you or why I should wait longer or why I should stay here. But I just feel you're in this point where there's this like a sense of awakening. Like I don't believe this anymore. And that phoenix rising from the ashes, heading towards the new heading towards what you know is out there. You know something is better. Look how straightforward he's looking. And two, with this death card, like the skeleton creature on this horse, you might even feel like this situation has depleted you. You might even feel like it's just been sucking your soul out from you. It's just soul crushing, soul draining. It's just, it just feels so so done like just something that is just I'll even say parasitic where you just might be feeling like I'm separating myself from this so I can heal so I can bring some life back into my spirit and some life back into my body and live I'm ready to live this situation is killing me and I'm ready to live that's the vibe I got as I was looking at this card. And it, it was, uh, it felt very powerful to me. So um, I've covered the different ways this card applies. I've covered what I felt intuitively um, in the energy of the card. And so I hope the message was helpful. If you haven't checked out the weekly forecasts yet, there is a link in the description that takes you to the weekly forecasts if you want to watch those. And um, if you want to schedule a private reading with me, there's a link in the description uh, on Calendly.com slash AmethystAngelite. Or it will take you to Calendly.com slash AmethystAngelite. And you can schedule a private reading with me there. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I hope you all have a fabulous day ahead. Um, whatever you're doing, whatever you're preparing for, if you're preparing for a holiday or just a day off, or even if you have to work in the next 24 hours, whatever you're doing, I hope it's wonderful. And, um, I will, uh, hopefully see you all in the next message. Take care and be well.